this is Trey Passo. Welcome to my review of Titans episode for season two, excuse me, episode 10, Titans. And this is episode called Fallen. Like I said, last episode, this review is going to have spoilers, of course, naturally. And last episode, we saw where Dick finally confessed uh, what happened with Jericho in the past. And the Titans sort of went their own way. The only one that kind of stayed loyal to Dick was Gar. Okay, and Superboy is unconscious, obviously. And certain things happened in the last episode. Dick tried to get redemption by going to Slade, uh, to Jericho's mother, uh, to you know tell her that he was responsible for Jericho, you know, dying and stuff, and and she wouldn't give him forgiveness. And we found out the Slade was actually still in living with him, and she actually pointed him towards Slade, and where he had a conversation with with uh, Slade, where Slade basically tells him, "Listen, you, you know, if you get the Titans back together, you know, at any point." In the world, I'll you know I'll slaughter you, I'll slaughter them. Basically, is what he told them. Now, this is based on the theory that a lot of people have, and that I have it as well. That when uh, Jericho got killed by Slade or stabbed by, it, he actually went inside of his father, and basically he's like trapped inside of his father. And we see pictures of, and if you watch the scene very carefully, when Dick goes in the room to see him, he, you see him sort of signing, which makes which kind of makes led you to believe that that is Jericho inside, you know, his uh, his father. But anyway, uh, that episode ended with uh, Dick Grayson going to the airport. It looked like he was going to go far away. He wanted to be isolated, far away from mankind as possible. That's, I believe that's what he said to the ticket agents. But then all of a sudden, he, I guess he changed his mind and decided that he needed to be further punished, and he attacked, the, uh, the, you know, the you know the agents, TSA agents at the airport and you know, voluntarily gave himself up, and that's basically where the episode ended with him being locked up. And this episode begins with him basically in jail, and we see they even go through the thing where he pleads guilty and he gets seven years, no probation, <laughs> which is just crazy. And of course, he gets you know in jail, and he, and he basically doesn't want to cooperate, even that you know the guards there find out that he's a he was a former detective, and they even gonna you know gonna protect him, but only if he can like give them information, and he kind of. You know, he says, "Yeah, I don't want anything special. I don't want. I just want to be left alone." So then they actually put him back in general population with everybody else, and actually they put him in a cell with these uh, three other um, inmates that are about they're part of this gang that are about to be deported uh, in a few days, and that's where his story kind of leaves off there. And then they kind of switch back to two other stories. Uh, the second story is, of course, Gar and what happened with Superboy when Superboy. He took Superboy out, and Superboy, uh, he invited Superboy to be a Titan, and then Superboy kind of misinterpreted <laughs> uh, cops arresting a uh, suspect <laughs> and went off, basically, and, and seriously heard about four or five cops, okay? And so that made big headlines, and this episode begins with Gar, you know, trying to reach, call Dick again and tell him, listen, I screwed up real badly, but I need, really need your help. Uh, <laughs> and, of course, we see uh, Superboy and Connor Kent. Uh, in the alleyway with Crypto walking by, he realizes after seeing the newspaper what, you know, all the damage that he's caused. And he basically tells Crypto, that, you know, to get away from me because I don't want you to get hurt, boy, get away. And he kind of forces Crypto to leave, and Crypto reluctantly leaves. And then the third story is Rachel. Uh, Raven, as we saw last episode, when she left with, um, with uh, Donna, and she actually, uh, basically, see, before she, you know, she was driving an Uber with Donna, and she kind of, you know, Donna was kind of ragging on Dick about him not telling the truth about how, you know, a Jericho died. And, and Raven says, well, listen, you know better. You, you know, you were a part of that, too. And she basically traps Donna in the car and takes off. Okay, and we see Raven in a soup kitchen. She's, you know, you know eating, and she actually kind of makes friends with another teenage runaway. And we also see at the same time Donna is looking out actively searching for her and she actually again another person who calls Dick of course and gets this goes straight to voicemail and she's asking telling him that Ray you know basically Raven has run, run away and please call her back and so she's looking for Raven and so now you have these three stories going on at the same time the well I say the most important one but the one that I got we'll start with Dick's story first. You know like I say he's in putting a cell with these three other inmates who are about to get deported because they're part of this gang culture. 
and they have this secret plan that they're going to escape, that they're going to get freedom, that they know that if they go back to their own country, they'll get murdered by their, you know, by the gang that they don't want to be a part of anymore. And so, you know, they're planning this escape, and, and Dick is telling them that, listen, this is not going to work. You're never going to, you know, he scopes it out, you know, doing his whole superhero thing. He scopes, he said, listen, you're never going to get out. There's guards on the gate, there's guards in the, in the, in the prison yard. You're never going to, you're never going to escape. And this is where we actually get the inspiration for Dick's uh, upcoming Nightwing character. Uh, in the comics, it was a little different. He kind of got the uh, the inspiration for Nightwing from from Superman, and that's a whole other story. You can Google that and search that. But in this one, they kind of make the, you have one of these inmates explains to Dick that there's a uh, ancient hero in their country that you know protects. He comes swoops down and comes and protects the innocent. Okay. And, and, and he draws a symbol of it. He has a symbol on the wall, and of course, that looks like the Nightwing symbol. Okay, and and you kind of see where Dick is going to get that inspiration when he eventually becomes Nightwing. Hopefully, before the end of the season, which I think definitely is going to happen. Okay, and basically, Dick uh, is telling them, "Listen, it's not going to work. It's not going to work." And even one of their fellow conspirators that's going to escape with them gets actually gets shanked in the yard. So it's only down to two of them. And Again, Dick is wanted on water, but they're not having it and they're not hearing it. And so they actually, uh, when they get ready to get deported, you know, ship out in the morning, they're, well, at, actually at night, you know, one of them has a shank and they kind of unhandcuff themselves from the back and they attack the guards. And they're about to get really, uh, you know, gunned down when Dick makes an appearance. <laughs> I don't know how he got out of the cell, but he got out of the cell. Well, you know, he's, he's, you know, he's been trained by Batman, so obviously. He could pick a lot, and he attacks the guards and stuff, and actually lets you know distracts them long enough that these two inmates escape, and of course he gets tackled and handcuffed and beaten and you know taken away, and that ends that story. Okay, so Dick's still locked up, and then the next story with Gar and Superboy, uh, Gar actually goes out looking, and he actually finds uh, actually no, he doesn't go out looking. He gets a, a knock on the door. Somebody. You know, there's a, somebody that triggers the alarm, and of course we see that's crypto, and and Gar goes down there, and they actually go into the city, and they actually find Connor, and and, and Connor kind of apolog and Gar apologized to Connor. He said, "I should have uh, explained things to you better, and you know, it wasn't your fault." You know, and you know, and they kind of you know make up for him. He said, "Listen, come back to the tower, and we'll try to get the other Titans together, and you know, we'll try to you know." resolve your issue. Okay. And of course they go back. But as we saw, we well I didn't talk about this, but in the beginning of the episode, we actually see Mercy Graves, believe it or not, domesticated. You see her with her her wife and her two bratty and not just kids. Okay. And you see this, she's trying to engage them in a car ride and then nothing and they're not really engaging with her, but she kinda of, kinda of forces them and says that we will have a board game tonight. <laughs> And we'll have engagement, okay? And then she gets the, you know, the alert on the phone where she, you know, she gets a message that that they found Subject 13, which AKA Superboy. And of course, she says, "Listen, I'll have to put, get four games will be off for the night." And then she goes. And then of course, when Gar comes, brings Superboy back to the tower. That's when Mercy's the crew they attack them. And of course, we get some nice action with uh, uh, the actor who plays Gar <laughs> does some nice karate and stuff. Of course, he changes into a tiger, but then he gets tranquilized. Crypto gets a crypto net, uh, kryptonite net thrown over him, and Mercy kind of persuades Connor to give up. So listen, we'll fix you. We'll mm -hmm. make you better than you were before. We'll help you, and and she and he kind of you know he 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 wants to get better. And he doesn't want to keep hurting people, and he reluctantly agrees to go along with them and voluntarily goes along with them. And they also take have Gar with them now that they know that he can actually, you know, change into an animal. <laughs> okay, and then we see, you know, we don't see Superboy anymore that so we just hear that he's secure in a, in a holding cell, or not a holding, no, actually in a, in a probably black in a, in a stasis tube that he can't escape from. And we also see Gar and and she, Mercy has a talk with him and she explains to him that she knows that that he was used to live with Miles Calder and Miles Calder is the one that kind of uh, cured you of that, you know, that deadly disease you had, which actually the side benefit is that you can change it to animals. And she says she knows that Miles Calder doesn't always do everything, you know, altruistically, you know, that 
but she said, if you stick around here, we can help you, you know, learn your powers and stuff and, and train you. And it's temp you can see it's kind of tempting to Gar, but he but ultimately he goes, No, I want to remain a Titan. That's what I he's yeah, that's what I want. I want to remain a Titan. And you see her sort of, you know, walk away and she talks to to the other uh, uh, fellow assistant and she tells him, Listen, we'll give him what he wants. Well we'll reunite him with the Titans. Which makes me believe that they're either gonna stick a tracker on Gar, okay, and just by times either observe the Titans or try to see what the extent of his powers are. There's an obviously an obvious motive by doing that that they're doing that. And I'm sorry sure when he was when he was unconscious they probably stuck a probe or something in him so that way they can track him and monitor him and stuff. So they'll send him back, you know, eight without Superboy obviously, but they'll send him back. And then that way they can spy on the Titans and find out if they have any more information and stuff that they can possibly you know they could possibly use, you know, Lex Luthor always looking for an advantage. Okay, so that kind of ended honestly. And then Rachel's story, she's, um, like I said, she's in a shelter, you know, in the homeless shelter eating, and she meets a fellow uh, a runaway girl that they, you know, they start having a conversation, and they actually sort of bond for a minute there talking about food and stuff and other subjects when this real creep comes in and grabs the girls and tells there you are, come back to me. Next time you leave, it's going to be, you know, he basically threatens her. <laughs> and of course, Rachel tells her, "You don't have to leave if you want." But you know, the guy tells her to mind her business. And he drags the girl off, and then of course, you see Rachel meet them in the alley, and she uses her powers on this creep <laughs> and holds them back. You know, holds, suspends them in air against the wall. <laughs> and of course, you know, the guy's totally freaked out, and she lets him go, and he runs away. And you see, even though you know, we even let him go, and let him go, you see her powers after she. She and the girl start walking away. Her powers, you see it actually float up. Her dark powers float up to this uh, church, this gargoyle statue that's on top of a church. And it actually makes it come to life. And this creature actually comes to life and it attacks the guy that, that she let go, the, you know, the bad guy that was attacking the runaway girl. And you see it actually attack and kill him. Okay, well, you don't actually see the killing part, but we see that later because later you see Donna, she, she again is calling Dick to tell him that, listen, I think something's wrong with Rachel because there's this guy that that we found, you know, they were tracking, I was tracking Rachel to the shelter, and there's a bit of murder right outside the shelter, so she she's worried about that maybe Rachel's powers is, you know, that triggering stuff is coming back. And obviously it is because she can't control that power, you know, the, the darkness of her actually came out and actually committed murder. So that's another interesting subject to, to go along. And so that's the three main stories for this episode. This is an interesting episode because, like I said, we got Dick, you know, he actually, you know, trying to be reluctantly and didn't want to help anybody, but ultimately he helped these two guys that were uh, basically going to get deported back to their country and killed. He actually helped them escape. So he still had that super bit of wanting to help people thing inside of him. He just got to get him out of prison. And I think I have a few theories on how he's going to get out of prison. Either Dick, uh, not Dick Grayson, Bruce Wayne is going to call in a few favors. Okay, and get his sentence commuted or something. That's what's probably going to happen. Uh, exactly. That's I think that's exactly how he's going to get out. Either that or the Titans are going to break him out, which I don't think is going to happen because then the Titans will be on a run. But I, so I think Dick, uh, Bruce Wayne, they're going to probably contact Bruce Wayne. He's going to pull a few, pull a few strings, and get uh, Dick, you know, reluctantly get him out of prison, even though he probably don't want to go at first. But then they'll snatch him out of prison. <laughs> okay, I think the other fellow Titans will come get him too and convince him to come. Anyway, uh, and so, like I said, the Soup Boy thing is interesting because Soup Boy, now he's back with Candace, okay? So we don't know how he, what's going to happen. Or, or what, maybe the will have to return of Eve, Dr. Eve, she'll hear that he's back there and, and see. But I'm interested in seeing what's going to happen with his story because, like I said, he went back to Candace willingly because he wants to get better. But, you know, they just want to control him and use him as a weapon. So we'll see what works with that. And the thing the Gar is interesting, too, because I think they, they actually... They probably put a tracker on guard and stuff so they can monitor him and stuff. And, and they probably took blood from him and everything else just to, to see if they can replicate that power. You know, Luther's never going to miss a chance to exploit a weakness or something. So they either took some someone, took some of his blood and stuff and they're going to use that to maybe even create another uh, uh, Beast Boy. Or they're going to stick a tracker on him so they can keep track of him and see how his powers evolve and stuff. There's always a reason. They're not just going to let him go with it without any consequence. So... 
Yeah, there's that. And then, of course, now we have Donna looking for Raven. And Raven, after she got introduced after she let the guy go, and the, the fellow runaway girl took her to this house where there's a other bunch of other runaway kids there. So she has a place to stay temporarily, at least. Well, like I said, Donna is tracking her, so hopefully maybe next episode Donna will track her. But I saw a preview picture with um, Starfire with Raven, so maybe... Uh, a Starfire, because Starfire is basically on her way back to Chicago, so maybe she's going to run into Donna, and Donna will tell her that the Raven's missing, and Starfire will track her down. Okay? But anyway, we're getting close. This is the 10th episode, so we got, I think, three more left, you know, because I think it's 30 episodes a season, so we're getting down to the nitty-gritty, and hopefully Dick will become Nightwing. I think the 13th episode is called Nightwing, so obviously that's when he'll become, get his costume and stuff, and, and hopefully the Titans will be fully formed, and all of them be in uniform, and all everything. Fight. Hopefully they'll kick Deathstroke's ass in the 13th episode. Anyway, let me know what you think of episode 10 called Fallen. What do you think of it? Uh, feel free to leave comments down below. I have links to my social media in the description box, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I also have a link to my other channel, all these in a page, so you check that out as well. And this is Trey Pastor saying so long and take care.